Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and it is going to be a interesting ride today. We are going to be examining Planet X. We're going to be looking at that uh, from a biblical aspect, as well as the Dead Sea Scrolls, even going back to the Colbrun once again. And again, let me remind you, the Colbrun is not, I do not consider that a Bible. I consider it just another source of information that we can take and glean from, from historical documentation. Uh, so let's uh, keep that in mind as I share some of this information with you today. Uh, we are going to be starting with a biblical passage over in the book of Corinthians, and you're going to be looking at this in a way maybe you never thought before, because uh, I, I, I'm really wanting you to dig deep on this. Uh, I, in fact, even as I was getting finishing up with some studies to put this message together for you today, uh, I even ran across something here in the War Scroll, which I actually have on my desk, part of the library. I have a huge library of Dead Sea Scrolls, fragments, translations, etc., and of course the originals, so I can see and read it for myself. But I ran across something that has really, really, really made me start thinking a lot deeper in a lot of other different directions as well. And it has to do with Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds that we read about from the Exodus account. And I've I can't help but wonder if that Exodus account is not a much greater battle than what we realize. Uh, now, that ought to really make a lot of people think, right? In fact, I say that because, and I'll just read it to you. You're going to see it later in the broadcast here. It says, the officers of his chariots in, uh, excuse me, let me back up. You shall act against them and against the Pharaoh and the officers of his chariots in the Red Sea, the stricken spirits, you will kindle like a flaming torch and achieve devouring wickedness. Mm. You want to talk about going deep? That made me go deep. That made me go deep. I actually had to go read it in the Hebrew as well. You know, I'm like, that's for another day. All right, let's get started here. Um, Go right into here. I, I just real quick, I want to just uh, share with you those that do appreciate the work we do and want to support. You feel led of God to support the work we do. Uh, you can so by going to our, our website. You can click right there, donate online, or um, you can go to or you can mail us to either Denu Institute or, like it says right above my head, there's Stephen Ben Noon, B E N N U N, at P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee 37872. Uh, we want to thank you for that and your kindness to want to help us. We really appreciate it because you're the one that makes it possible, uh, just to say the very least. Uh, anyway, now I want you to think as we read this here, we're going to think a little bit outside the box, outside the norm of what we normally think about when we're reading what Paul writes here. And, uh, you know, I've read a lot of different writings. I've read writings as well that are attributed to Paul that are not considered canonical. Um, and yet at the same time, if you look at his writings that are biblical, you know, there, there is, they just seem to dovetail together in a lot of areas. So it really gives us time and a pause to think deeply when we read this. So let's, let's go carefully. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35, but some men will say, how are the dead raised up and what body do they come? Well, he says, uh, you fool, excuse me. That which you sow is not quickened, except it die. And that which you sow, you sow not that body that shall be, be, but bare grain. And it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Now I'm going to stop just for a second now. They're asking about what body do you come back up in after you die? And then he uses an analogy of planting a seed. And that what you sow or that what you plant in the ground. And that, that, uh, and, and that what you sow, that body that shall be but bare grain. But it may chance of a wheat or some other grain. It could be that or something else. But God gives it a body as it hath pleased him. And to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. 
But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Celestial being those things that are like a heavenly body, and terrestrial being an earthly body. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. Now, I find it fascinating that not only does he talk about different types of flesh, and we see that you know one is of men, another is flesh of a beast, another of fish, another of birds. But could it be that he's alluding to, just like when he talks about the celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, that we could possibly have other types of beings on this earth. You know, Paul is the one that said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I'm going to pull that up. I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to do it under the search and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, some people, when you talk about the word archons, that just drives them nuts. Okay, let's see. And the reason being is because they think it's not a biblical term, but it is. It's a very biblical term. And let me just find the one I'm looking for. Because here we go, right here. Principalities, Ephesians 6. Okay. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Let's click on that word principalities. It's arche. Or archaea. All right. And archaea is the, is, uh, the Greek word for archons. That's what you're fighting against. That's why Paul says you fight against principalities, against powers, exousia, against the rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why he tells you to put on the full armor of God. So when we read over here, and we find out there are different types of bodies, even the celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. He's letting you know not everything is the same. We can look at where uh, Jesus says in Matthew 23, speaking of the Pharisees, when he says to them that they are, uh, well, one, he says, you of your father, the devil. But then another place, he says that you are that they were vipers a seed uh, of serpents or a family of serpents. So we think about that as we continue on here. Now, uh, let's see. I got to see how I got everything laid out because I forget. You're going to see this in the Dead Sea Scrolls later. Then shall Asher fall with the sword, not of a man and not the sword of not of men shall devour him. It actually is using over here, Lo'ish, which is not of man. And then it says, Lo Adam. So there's two different words for the same uh, thing, Ish and Adam. And he shall flee from the sword and his young men shall become tributary. In what we read in the Dead Sea Scrolls and what we read even in the judgments of the book of Amos, for example, and I think, I think, I don't know if I have the one up for Amos for that judgment or not. Yeah, here we go right here. Uh, the way the judgment is described, this coming, is very reminiscent of the destruction, even of, of during Noah's day. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast. I will take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Yea, though you 
offer me burnt offerings and your meal offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take you away from me the noise of your songs. Now I've got these highlighted differently. The feast, the songs, Psalms of David, in other words. And let me not hear the melody of thy psalteries. But let justice well up as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Did you bring unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness for 40 years, O house of Israel? So shall you take up uh, Sukkot, your king, and Cheon, your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. The star of your God. You remember when Israel turned back, when they thought Moses was dead. This is where he's talking about offering up the sacrifices and things. They made the the, the altar and they served the God of Rimfan, Rimfan. And that's where we first find out about this star. I believe that their that their worship was to the God that came on that planet that they call Planet X. I believe that's what they did. Like I said, even when I read over here in the war scroll here, this is about the war between the sons of darkness and the sons of light. I believe there's a lot more to the Exodus story than what we really realize. A lot more. Now, I said to you, though, that there was some things I highlighted in here intentionally because there's some things I want you to think about. Take you away from me the noise of thy songs or your songs. Let me not hear the melody. There is a reason for that. Let me see if it's, I forget which one it is. Let me just, here we go right here. This is in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I do not have it marked which one it is. But if you looked it up by just some of the key words here, you'd easily be able to find it. It's in column 27. First, they quote first, uh, let's see, 2 Samuel 23, 7. And the wood of the axe and with fire, they are completely burned uh, on the place. Goes into a blank spot. And David, son of Jesse, was wise in a light like the light of the sun and learned. And discerning and perfect in all the paths before God and men. And, and we go to a blank spot. Yahweh gave him a discerning and enlightened spirit. And he wrote Psalms. Watch this right here. 3,600. 3,600. And songs to be sung before the altar over the perpetual offering of every day. For all the days of the year, 364. Not 360 based on a lunar calendar, not 365 based on the Gregorian calendar, but 364. And for the Sabbath offerings, 52 songs. And for the offering of the uh, first days of the month, And for all the days of the festivals and for the day of atonement, 30 songs. And all the songs which he spoke were 446. And songs to perform over the possessed for the total was 4,050. All these he spoke through the spirit of prophecy. Watch this now, which had been given to him from before the most high. I don't know if you realize this or not, but whether it be the Sabbath, whether it be the songs for every day of the year, that's songs for celestial events. How the Sabbaths fall. How, of course, days of of the year, that'd be based on the on the sun, the rotation of the earth around, uh, you know, around the sun. 360 of those. 
And if that be the case there, then what about the 3,600 songs? The only thing that corresponds, and I actually was interesting, I actually run across this on a website I found. 3,600 songs that he wrote, the only thing that corresponds with that celestial is the passing of Planet X. It is believed that it passes here every 3,600 years. Think about it. Now, then we look at what the scripture says here uh, over in, where am I at? Amos chapter 5. And he says, take away, take you away from me the noise of your songs. Let me not hear the melody. And it just so happens to be that that is at a time where woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, wherefore would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him and went into the house and he leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Hmm. Boy, that's interesting, isn't it? A serpent bits, bites him. Hanachash. Not just any serpent. That Hanachash is the same serpent that was in the Garden of Eden. It's like there's no escape. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? I, I hate and despise your feast. I will take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Yes, though you offer to me burnt offerings and your meal offering, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your beast, fat beast. Take you away from me the noise of your songs. They'd been singing these things for all those years. David did it by inspiration. Prophetically, those songs were written. I actually did have one up too. Uh, I don't think this is the one I'm thinking of. Let me just look and see though. Yeah, this is one right here. Here we go. <laughs> and at the brightness before him, there passed through his thick clouds hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the Most High gave forth His voice, hailstones, coals of fire. He sent out His arrows and scattered them and He shot forth lightnings and discomfited them. And the channels of waters appeared and the foundation of the world were laid bare. At thy rebuke, O Lord, the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, he sent from on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from mine enemy most strong, and from them that hated me, for they were too mighty for me. That's kind of, you know, David was faced with a very similar situation we are. There is an enemy on this earth. There are demonic entities on here too strong for us. And actually, oh gosh, I forgot. I forgot to back it up. Let's let's yeah, let's back it up some more here. This, this is interesting. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out unto my God, and out of his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him unto his ears. Then the earth did shake and quake, and the foundations also, the mountains did tremble. They were shaken because he was wroth or he was angry. Smoke arose up in his nostrils and fire out of his mouth did devour coals flame forth from him. He bowed the heavens also and came down and thick darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did swoop down upon the wings of the wind. Now that'll make your brain start doing some serious thinking, won't it? He made darkness his hiding place. 
his pavilion around about him, darkness of water, thick clouds of the skies. I wonder how many people really begin to examine the Word of God at this point. At the brightness before him, there were paths through his thick clouds, hailstones, and coal, coals of fire. And like I said, it reminds me of what happened not only during the days of Noah, but even in the days of uh, the Exodus. I want to take you, uh, this is going to be, like I said, I, we're going to probably hit the, I think this is the Colbrin here. Um, yes, I believe this is the Colbrin. Now, when I tell you, as I said to you, and I want to remind you, do not take the Colbrin as a Bible, please. I ask you don't do that. I use, you know, we are, we are a research institute. We research old documents does not mean that I endorse them. We use it for research purposes. All right. This only gives us a historical view from a different point of view. Does it mean it's perfectly accurate? No, doesn't mean it's perfectly accurate by no means, but it's just like you can take in every civilization on this earth that there is, they have historical documentation of the flood. They all have a different perspective on how that flood happened, but they all have documentation that a flood happened on this earth. So if I take and I read from one of those documents about what happened during the flood, it doesn't mean that I endorse that document, but it means that we're using it for historical reference. That's what we're doing here. Uh, GLN 424, then with the dawning men saw an awesome sight they're riding on a great black rolling cloud came the destroyer newly released from the confines of the sky vaults notice how it reads that there newly released from the confines of the sky vaults that reminds me and i don't have it up here but i'm going to pull it up that reminds me of revelation chapter 9 to, to some degree. I think we're looking at the sixth seal here. Uh, let's see here. Well, no, it's right. Let's just write it. At the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So we know it's an individual. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the bottomless pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, and the scorpions, the earth, have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should torment for five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion when they strike at the man. All right. Now, let's see if there's something else I want to get in here. Well, if we get into the horsemen, that's a little different. Out of, out of the, their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, and by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and their tails, and their tails were likened to serpents, and had heads with them they do hurt. I'm going to put some just pieces together here for you, for you to think about. That's really what I'm, uh, this is my objective right now, is things for you to think about. I don't say that I give you the answer to it. I just want you to think about it. So we go back, and this one here is in the Colbrin. Um, the, the, the confines of the sky vaults. You know, in a way, it kind of reminds me, too, of Satan being, uh, the, the bottomless pit being open and him coming out. And she raged about the heavens, for it was her day of judgment. The beast with her, op the beast with her opened its mouth and belched forth fire, hot stones and vile smoke. 
It covered the whole sky above and the meeting place of earth, and heaven could no longer be seen. And in the evening, the places of the stars were changed. They rolled across the sky to new stations. Then the flood waters came. You see, one of the ways they know that this binary system is coming is things begin to move out of their place. And I do believe that CERN, the multiple ones we have on the earth, are what are going to be the key that opens that bottomless pit that allows this system to come in. Now, mind you, I'm not saying that God can't use anything to bring judgment upon this earth. So just think about it. The floodgates of heaven were open and the foundations of earth were broken apart. The surrounding waters poured over the land and broke upon the mountains. The storehouses of the winds burst their bolts asunder. So storms and whirlwinds were loose to hurl themselves upon the earth. In the seething waters and howling gales, all buildings were destroyed. Trees were uprooted and mountains cast down. Notice the howling gales, the winds. I've been telling you, what, two years? We're going to have hypercanes. Now Mike comes out recently and also said the same, same thing. They're going to have hypercanes. That's what's coming. Hurricanes that are so massive in size. And the winds... 200 miles an hour plus. Now, it's not to say we haven't had that type of storm before, not maybe in size uh, that, you know, from what Mike describes it, they'd cover the entire United States. It'll be so big. But uh, Hurricane Camille, like I've said many times, I remember it as a little boy. I can still remember the floodwaters uh, that we had were so deep we were swimming in the front yard. Um, I think that was around 1969, I want to say, something to that effect there. I just remember because I know we still lived in our house uh, on Petunia Street. And uh, and I think my mother moved away from there when I was either five or six years old. So I had to have been right around that time. I was born in 64. So either 1969 or 1970. But he goes on to say there, the howling gales, all buildings were destroyed. Trees were uprooted and the mountains cast down. There was a time of great heat. Then came a time of bitter cold. What do we tell you about that, too? We've been telling you now a couple of years, I guess, as well. Maybe not quite a couple of years on that. I think that's been about a year and a half, maybe a year, where we said it's going to be hot when it should be cold, and it's going to be cold when it should be hot. And we actually spoke about that before the situation happened in Texas where they had that freeze, an untimely, unseasonable freeze. Um, and it's interesting, too. And we have the, the system hasn't got here fully yet by no means we're, this is like way 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 outer type stuff we're being affected by but i know the um, um terry he uh, runs the hardware store not far from where i'm at and uh, he told me he said uh, about the inline winds we've been having uh here in tennessee he said stevie says i've been here my whole life he said i have never seen inline winds that strong and we only seen, I think, about 60. I think one time before, though, we did. We had, I think we had about 70 mile an hour winds at one storm that I was here with. But it's 65 miles an hour is what they were having here. And I'm thinking to myself, you have no idea, Terry, they're going to be over 100 miles an hour. So, yeah, do, do what you can to batten things down. And, I, and, and look, I will tell you something. What I'm sharing with you now. I do not I do not live in a fear. I don't live in a panic or anything like that. I try to use a little bit of wisdom. Wherever you live at won't make any difference. Stay where you are, but do what you can do. You know, uh, just like if you're on the coastline, prepare for the worst hurricane. In other words, make sure you got food and water for, for a little over a month's time. Just, just saying, you know, to have it for a little bit over a month's time. That would be my thought. Uh, I don't believe in stockpiling hordes and hordes. I mean, we have. We have done a lot of stockpiling. A lot of it just goes bad because you don't, you know, you get so backed up, you don't rotate properly. And, you know, if you don't get it all mylared in time where it'll last longer, you know, then you just, it goes to waste. And I hate that. So I've learned to be, I've tried to be a little bit more reasonable about the way we do things. Live your life as everything's okay. But just make some precautionary measures 
So if things were to get bad, you're protected. That's why I do the EMP shield as well. Uh, I have it on the car. And uh, I, I got one for the house. And I, was, I know I need to get it put on the house. But it's a little bit more in in detail for me to do than, than I'm comfortable with doing. So I really need to have an electrician do it. Uh, I'd feel safer that way. But I think it's an awesome investment. And after we visited with the company there, now I know it's a good investment. Uh, so uh, that's for a lot of different reasons. And that's not even dealing with this system. There's writings in, um, there's one, and again, I do not consider these things biblical, so you got to keep that in mind. But if you look at Nag Hammadi, there was one writing in there. It clearly seems to be talking about Planet X coming through, but it talks about the kings of the earth become drunken and they just want to war with one another. That's where we are right now. And that's before all this crazy stuff happens. All right, so let's continue on. Now, and I got a lot of stuff. Uh, even what you're seeing popping up at the bottom of the screen is not nearly as much as I do have that I want to share with you. So let me just look and see where we're at here. We are in the Dead Sea Scrolls now. Um, okay, yeah, this is one here. And we're in 4Q428. Okay. This... I find extremely fascinating fragment. And, and I have to say the same thing with the Dead Sea Scrolls as I say with the Colburn or any other book. A lot of these are commentaries that are written. It does not make it biblical. Although they will cite biblical passages, they will give their interpretation. It doesn't make their interpretation correct. But it gives us a perspective that they looked at that we maybe have not thought about before. That's why I want to bring this out. Okay, so let's look at it. Your mouth. I'm starting up here. Uh, I don't know if you can see the mouse here, but I'm starting right there. Your mouth and you have freed me from blank and from blank. Now my soul blank. They have considered me and have set my soul like a boat in the depths of of the sea, like a fortified city positioned opposite its enemies. I was in distress like a woman given birth the first time when her labor pains come on her and pains racks the mouth of her womb to begin the birth of the crucible of the pregnant woman for children come through the breakers of death and the woman expectant with a boy is racked by her pains for through the breakers of death, she gives birth to a male. Through the pains of Sheol, there emerges from the crucible of the pregnant woman, a wonderful counselor with his strength. And the boy is freed from the breakers. Now, I think what I have highlighted here in yellow could very well be very prophetic. Speaking of Jesus Christ, a wonderful counselor. I think that's uh, Isaiah, what is that, Isaiah 9, 6, uh, Shelo Yoetz, which is a, 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 a wonderful counselor, El Gibor, mighty God. In the woman expectant with him rush all the extra, uh, contractions and the raking pain at their birth. Now notice that, at their birth. Okay. Terror seizes those expectant with them, and at his birth all the labor pains come suddenly. In the crucible, the pregnant woman. Now, the next part here highlighted is going to switch. It's going to literally change women. And that's what you need to pay close attention to. And she who is pregnant with a serpent is with raking pain. Now, one woman gives birth to a wonderful counselor. Now we have one that is pregnant with a serpent. Could the fallen angels be reptilian? So when we think, and I say this, for example, if you think about when Eve in the Garden of Eden and the serpent comes up to her, 
He's cursed to go on his belly. So he wasn't on his belly to start with. He had to be erect and upright. Or at least had to have legs. Um, so the question is, and, and this was actually, I actually got asked this. I, I was told that there are those uh, in some of the intel circles that study the ancient documents that are that have uh, wondered whether or not this serpent actually was a re one of the reptilian aliens that we have here on the earth. And as I've said to them, I mean, I don't know. I said, but there, I guess anything's possible. But watch what it says here, though. This is fascinating to me, especially in light of the fact. All right. And let, let's just quickly go to uh, I need to pull this up for the sake of. Um, I'm going to use the Hebrew Matthew and mainly because it just carries a bit more of the. Um, it, it gives you a little bit better verbiage. It's no, really no different than, than our Matthew, but uh, I just like the fact of the way it words it here and the fact that you get to see it in Hebrew as well. Let's take it. Let's go over here. We're going to Matthew 23 and around verse 36, I believe it is. Uh, 33, actually. All right. And right here, Nachashim Zara Sufanim Echa. Okay, he says, Serpents, seed of vipers, how you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not return in repentance. All right, so it doesn't mean now that, that the Pharisees were so messed up that they could not repent. He just asked the question. How will you escape that judgment if you don't repent? But he calls them. And who's he talking to? He's talking to the Pharisees. Woe to you, sages and Pharisees, hypocrites, who are like whited sepulchers, which appear on the outside to be beautiful to men, but on the inside are full of bones of the dead and filthy. Thus you appear on the outside to be righteous to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, hypocrites, Pharisees, sages, because you build the tombs of the prophets and glorify the monuments of the righteous. You say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have permitted them to put the prophets to death. In this you bear witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who killed the prophets. You behave according to the deeds of your fathers. Now, He's actually calling their fathers serpents, seed of vipers. How you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance. So why is it that they can repent, but maybe the fathers could not? It's because they're in a mingled seed to begin with. Interestingly enough, their mothers... Would have been right, would have been righteous women, just like it was in the days of Noah. Remember the women there in Genesis six, when we read about that, you know the fallen angels coming to them. Uh, we get this more in the book of Enoch than anything, uh, but you, they they come to them and they persuade them to sleep with them. Actually, in one of the uh, non-canonical documents, it said that they the first time they never would do it. But when they come the second time to them, they appeared as if they were their husbands. They could shape shift. They could transform themselves to make themselves appear to be something they were not. That's how they fell for it. But he says, you behave according to the deeds of your fathers, serpents, seed of vipers. I, we don't have time to go back to it now, but you already know where that is. That's over... Um, just so I don't forget, let me just make sure. Uh, this is for your guys' sake. Uh, where we? Where was that at? That's, uh, oh gosh. Mm, which book was that in? Go to, 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 to Proverbs, Daniel, Nehemiah, Ezra. Ezra 9. And, and maybe we'll just do it for the sake of those that may be the first time here. Now, when these things were done, right? The priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations. Even the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and the Amorites, which, by the way, these are the ones that were living in the land of what we call Israel today. 
and they had mingled their seed with what? The giants. Well, we knew they had mingled their seed, but uh, they were giants in the land, if you remember. I remember David had to kill, uh, you know, uh, Goliath, etc., right? For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that they have so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. There it is right there. The holy seed mingled themselves with the peoples of the land. And that's why you have seed of vipers. And that may be what came down during the days of Noah, the fallen angels, you know, because you got to remember, I mean, don't don't be even surprised. Uh, I mean, of course, the fallen angels, maybe they didn't look reptilian in the beginning. Who knows? Maybe they look handsome. Uh, we don't know the answer to that. But I wouldn't be surprised even if they did look like an animal because, I mean, my gosh, how many times are we reading the Bible ourselves? Like in the case of the angel that comes down, he's got four heads and one's the head of a man, one's the head of a lion, one's the head of an eagle, one's the head of, you, you see what I'm saying? Beastly heads. So would it be strange to think something like that? Not necessarily. We don't we don't know the answer to that. Um, so at any rate, gosh, don't want to get too far gone on all these things here. Uh, that's a different Dead Sea Scroll fragment. Where where were we at though, guys? Let's take. I think this is where. Yeah, here we are, right here. So anyway, we come back to the Dead Sea Scroll here. I done forgot where we were at. So, all right. Oh, yeah, I know. We were actually reading, and I know where we were at now. We were, thank you for whoever said that on the screen. I know how it is, right? See, no, I didn't hear you either. I'm just messing around with you right now. But uh, you know how it is. You you watch the TV, and, and something's going to happen. You're trying to warn the guy on the TV, but, you know, the thing's already acted out, so he doesn't know anything, right? But I, you can't help but think somebody probably out there listening, no, brother, you were you were reading from the book of Matthew. Go back to that one. Okay, no, I just happened. To, it just popped in my head, so I know now. Anyway, seed of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of Gehenna? All right, so we got that that part there. Now we can jump back over. It was actually right here where we were at. All right, so she is who is pregnant with a serpent is with raking raking pain, and the breakers of the pit result in the deeds of terror. Now. This is going to get interesting. I, I promise you it's going to get interesting because you're going to find out there's more than one of these descendants. And that's what Jesus is alluding to. The foundations of the wall shake like a ship on the surface of the sea and the clouds of thunder with a roar. Those who live on the dust as well as those who sail upon the sea are terrified by the din of the water. For them, their wise men and all like sailors on the deeps, for swallowed up is all their wisdom by the roar of the seas. When the deeps boil over the springs of water, they rush forth to form huge waves and breakers of water with clamorous sound. And when they rush forth, Sheol and Abaddon open. We got a Planet X type of event taking place. And we're seeing almost like two boys being born, one a deliverer for our soul. And I, I can't say for sure that that wonderful counselor is truly Jesus. I don't know. I really honestly do not know. But that other one, the woman is pregnant with the serpent, right? Watch this. So open all the arrows of the pit. Make their voice heard while going down to the abyss. And the gates of Sheol open for all the deeds of the serpent. And the doors of arrows. Okay, here we go. And the doors of the pit close upon the one expectant with injustice. And everlasting bolts upon all the spirits of the serpent. That's one reason why I have suspected the fallen angels to be like that. The pit closes upon the one expectant with injustice and everlasting bolts upon all the spirits of the serpent. 
I thank you, Lord, because you saved my life from the pit and from Sheol and Abaddon and have lifted me up on an everlasting height so that I can walk on the boundless plain. You know, Jesus, and we get this over and over and over in the New Testament, Paul's writings especially, but Jesus said that we would tread the heads. Let's look it up. Let's just look it up. Tread heads. Let's just do it that way there. Maybe a singular. And I probably spelt the word tread on the heads wrong head. So let me take that out. Here we go. Revelation 919. For their power is in their oh, that's not the one I wanted either. Hang on. I give it it's where he says I'm giving you power. Two. Power two. Let's try it that way there. And hang on. We'll find it here in one second, guys. Even if we have to pause the video. Just use the word tread. Maybe that's the way I got to look it up here. Here we go right here. Luke 10, 19. Let's go to verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. If you're walking on the head, then he's imprisoned is where he's at. But the question is, he got imprisoned. He, he was thrown out from heaven down to this earth. Jesus saw that happen. He dealt with it when he was here. He was here when he was, when Jesus was here, Satan was here. Somewhere along the way, though, he got locked up. Because you're able to tread on the head of serpents. All right, so, hmm, wish that was in Matthew so I could look it up that way. Let's come back, see which one we were at here. I think it's this one here. Yeah, okay, so we finished that up there, the doors of the injustice. Now, um, this is another one here from 1QH. I'm going to start up here at verse 27. When all the arrows of the pit fly without return and are shot without hope. When the measuring line falls upon judgment and the lot of anger and on the forsaken of the outpouring of wrath against the hypocrites and the period of anger against any Belial, the ropes of death enclose with no escape. Then the torrents of Belial will overflow the high banks like a devouring fire in their watering channels, destroying every tree, tree green or dry from their canals. It roams with flames of fire until none, until none of those who drink are left. It consumes the foundations of clay and the tracks of dry land, the bases of the mountains does he burn and converts the roots of flint rock into streams of lava. It consumes right to the great deep. The torrents of Belial break into abaddon. The schemers of the deep howl of the den of those extracting mud. The earth cries out uh, at the calamity which overtakes the world. And all the schemers scream and all who are upon it go crazy. Talk about a Planet X type scenario, right? And melt away the great calamity, for God will thunder with the roar of his strength, and his holy residence echoes the truth of his glory, and the host of heavens adds to their noise, and the eternal foundation. Let me see if I have another one. Yeah. Um, 
Foundations melt and shake in the battle of heavenly heroes roams unceasingly over the earth until the determined, eternal, unparalleled destruction. I give you thanks, O Lord, for you have a massive rampart for me. All destroyers and all you hide me from the turbulent calamities. Friends, <laughs> you want to talk about a Planet X scenario. There is no doubt we're in that time frame. Uh, now I'm going to share with you now. This is from the uh, wait a minute, yeah the Colburn document. And again, please hold in your mind. This is not a biblical document, but we want to glean from this from uh, from historical writing. And I'm going to read to this one here because it talks about what had happened. They called it the destroyer and what's coming. Men forget the days of the destroyer. Only the wise know where it went and that it will return at its appointed hour. That in itself right there, that just that first part right there. Wise know where it went and when it will return in its appointed hour. If you remember when we first came down here, David, I think it where, let's see, where was it at? Um, let's see, right here. Think, yeah, here we go. David, uh, and can I blow this up? Let me try. Okay, no, I was actually never saved it is what it was. Okay. Son of Jesse was wise and light like the light of the sun and learned and discerning, perfect in all his paths before God and men. So in the Colburn, it says the wise knew and he wrote what? 3,600 songs. And when he did the ones for the days of the year, for all the days of the year, he actually says it. For all the days of the year, 364. And for the Sabbath offerings, 52. That's the, if I, if I remember right, and I may be wrong on this, but if I remember right, that would be the times that how the moon comes into a full moon each month, right? Uh, or something to that, or maybe the cycle of it, because you, know, you have 52 weeks in a year, right? So there, there you have right there, 50, what was it, 52? Is that what it said? Yeah, 52. And there's 52 weeks in a year. It's just fascinating that he's doing this based on celestial events, but he does. they don't say why the 3,600. I believe David knew why he did it. He wouldn't have done it if he didn't. Love to see all those. And I know in the Dead Sea Scrolls, we do have, uh, I think you have 100, a little over 100 and something Psalms in the, in the Bible, but we actually have in the Dead Sea Scrolls the 364 Psalms. Could you imagine what he wrote in those other ones, though? They have to, no doubt, be something about this binary system. So, now i got to go back and find where I was at. <laughs> okay, here we go. Back to the, here we go, right here. So it says here, men forget the days of the destroyer. Only the wise know where it went and that it will return at the appointed hour. Well, David wrote 3,600. He must have known 3,600 years later it's going to come. It raged across the heaven in the days of wrath, and this was its likeness. It was a billowing cloud of smoke and wrapped in a ruddy glow, not distinguishable in joint or limb. Its mouth was an abyss from which came flame, smoke, and hot cinders. When ages pass, certain laws operate upon the stars in the heavens. Their ways change. There is movement and restlessness. There are no longer constant, and great lights appear redly in the sky. When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ash. Trees will be destroyed and living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land and the seas will boil. These are just things that are going to happen before it gets here. The heavens will burn brightly and redly. There will be a copper hue over the face of the land, followed by a day of darkness. A new moon will appear and break up and fall. The people will scatter in madness. 
They will hear the trumpet and battle cry of the destroyer and will seek refuge within dens of the earth. They're already doing it. They're getting ready for it now. Terror will eat away their hearts and their courage will flow from them like water from a broken pitcher. They will be eaten up in the flames of wrath and consumed by the death of the destroyer. Thus it was in the days of the heavenly wrath which have gone and thus it will be in the days of doom when it comes again. The times of its coming and going are known unto the wise. These are the signs of the time which shall precede the destroyer's return. A hundred and ten generations shall pass into this west, and nations will rise and fall. Men will fly in the air as birds, and swim in the sea as fishes. Men will talk peace one with another. Hypocrisy and deceit shall have their day. They're already flying in the air like birds and then the fish swim like that. You know, you got submarines and airplanes. And they already talk about peace and it is all hypocrisy. Women will be as men and men as women. Yeah, that's... Look at what they're doing right now in the schools. Think about it. I won't go into it. Just think about it. Women will be as men and men as women. Passion will be a plaything of man. And that's exactly what that's become to. Perversions. Unbelievable perversions. A nation of soothsayers shall rise and fall. Their tongue shall be the speech learned. A nation of lawgivers shall rule the earth. And pass away into nothingness. I can't help but think there that nation of lawgivers shall rule the earth and pass away into nothingness. Maybe that will be when they force these Noahide laws. They get away with it for a little bit of time, but then it'll go into nothingness. One worship will pass into the four quarters of the earth, talking peace and bringing war. A nation of the seas will be greater than any other, but will be as an apple rotten at the core and will not endure. A nation of traitors will destroy men and wonders, and it shall have its day. Then shall the high strive with the low, and the north with the south, and the west, and, and with the east with the west, and the light with the darkness, and men shall be divided by their... Let's roll it up to the top here. Races, and the children will be born as strangers among them. Brothers shall strive with brother, husband with wife. Fathers will no longer instruct their sons, and their sons will be wayward. Women will become the common property of men and will no longer be held in regard and respect. Then men will be ill at ease in their heart. They will seek they know not what uncertainty and doubt will trouble them. They will possess great riches, but poor in spirit. Then will heavens tremble and the earth move. Men will quake in fear. And while the terror walks with them, the heralds of doom will appear. They will come softly as thieves to the tombs. Men will not know them for what they are. Men will be deceived. The hour of the destroyer is at hand. In those days, men will have the great book before them. Wisdom will be revealed. The few will be gathered for the stand. It is the hour of trial. The dauntless ones will survive. The stout-hearted will not go down to destruction. Great God of all ages alike to all who sets the trials of man, be merciful to our children in the days of doom. Man must suffer to be great, but hasten not his progress unduly in the great winnowing. Be not too harsh on the lesser ones among them. Even the son of thieves has become your scribe. And I'll just kind of end it with that right there. Not ending the, the video itself here, but just going into that issue there. Let me see what else we had up here. The book of Numbers also. That's where we'd actually quoted this scripture from the Dead Sea Scrolls already. Behold him, but not nigh. There shall st step forth the star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite through the corners of Moab and break down all the sons of Seth. You know, I can't help but wonder about this here. You remember how they said they set up that star of Rimfan after, uh, you know, when Moses didn't come back down off the mountain. And even when the wise men came from the east 
following the star, looking for the birth of Jesus, Herod was really curious about that star. Now, we know that was a godly uh, sign about Jesus, but the question remains, though, could it be that, that Herod was curious because he was thinking of the star of Ramphan? Don't know. Don't know the answer to that. But it is something worth uh, considering. Okay. In the book of Acts, and here it is, it's where I was talking about Ramphan. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O you house of Israel, have you offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Molech and the star of your God, Remphan, figures which you made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. I think there was a lot more to what happened in Egypt than what we realized. And I do believe it was a showdown. Without a doubt, I believe it was a showdown for sure. And this is where I was talking about as far as Herod. And when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And we know that was just him being a, a little sneaky devil. But he may have been concerned that that star was what was written about the, about the time of the Exodus and the time of Noah's day. And it may have set fear in his mind when he heard about that. Uh, that's just a conjecture. I don't know if that is really the case. Now, let's see here. I want to take one moment. 1QM... Uh, 10 and 11. Open the ears hearing profound things. Uh, you created the dome of the sky, the army of the luminaries, the task of the spirits, the dominion of the holy ones, the treasures of glory. In the darkness of the clouds, you are creator of the earth, of the laws, of its divisions, and the deserts and steep of all its products with fruits, of the circle of the seas, the reservoirs of the rivers of the chasm of the abyss of the beast and birds of man's image of the generations of confusion of tongues and the separation of nations. Remember the Tower of Babel, right? Of the dwellings of the clans, of the inheritance of the lands, of the sacred season, the cycle of the years, the ages of eternity. We have known this through your knowledge, which you, your ear to our cry. Okay. For the battle is yours. With the might of your hand, the corpses have been torn to pieces with no one to bury them. Goliath from Gath, gallant, giant, you delivered into the hands of David, your servant, for he trusted in your powerful name and not in a sword or a spear. For the battle is yours. The Philistines you humiliated many times for your holy name by the hand of our kings. Besides, you saved us many times thanks to your mercy, not of our own deeds by which we did wrong, nor by the sinful actions. For the battle is yours. And it is from you that the powers come, and not from our own being. It is not our might nor the power of our own hands which performs these marvels except by your great strength and by your mighty deeds. Thus you taught us from ancient times saying, and he quotes the book, of Numbers chapter 24. A star will depart from Jacob. A scepter will be raised in Israel. It will smash the temples of Moab. It will destroy all the sons of Seth. Now that I wondered about because Seth was the righteous seed that replaces Abel. It will come down from Jacob. It will exterminate the remnant of the city. The enemy, the enemy will be its possessions. And Israel will perform feats by the hand of your anointed ones. Seers of decrees you taught as the times of wars of your hands to fight to be glorious over our enemies, to fell the hordes of Belial, the seven peoples of the futility by the hand of the poor, those you saved with strength and success towards the wonderful power that the melting heart became a door to hope, you shall treat them like Pharaoh, like the officers of his chariots in the Red Sea. The stricken of the Spirit you shall set aflame, 
like a torch of fire and straw, devouring wickedness without ceasing until the sin be consumed. From old you foretold us the appointed time of the power of your hand against the kingdom, saying, A sure will fall by sword of not a man. The sword of not a human being will devour it. For you will deliver into the hands of the poor the enemies of the countries and the hand of his prone, the dust in order to fell powerful ones of the nations. To return the reward of sin, their guilty heads, to pronounce the justice, your truth, judgment, every son of man, to make every lasting name for yourself among the people, the wars in order to show yourself great and holy in the eyes of the remainder of this people of the peoples. Now, I want to bring out something here for you. And this is what I want to show. See the sin of their guilty heads to pronounce the justice of your truthful justice on every son of man. Wait, that's not the one where it was. Where was it? Hang on. Okay. Delivering into the hands of the poor. Okay. The enemies, countries in the hand of those prone to the dust. Okay. To fail the powerful ones of the nations. Now, let me see if I can find it real quick for you. Um, the nations and a lot of darkness shall battle together the gods but God's might between the roar of huge multitude and the shouts of gods and men of the day of calamity and it will be a time of suffering for all the nations redeemed of God of all their sufferings none will be like this hastening till eternal redemption is fulfilled and on the day of their war three will gird themselves strengthening the heart of the sons of light and in the seventh lot God's great hand will will subdue Belial and the angels of his dominion and all the truth for the destruction of the sons of darkness. So this was another one here where it uh, clearly shows these this end coming. And what I'm wanting to show you, we have a place here where it talks about the kings of the earth and that the spirits that they have, that they are that literally they are the serpents of the, these kings are. Upon the work of the iniquity of the sons of truth, favorable. Let's see. Here we go, right here. This is the one I wanted to show you. And we'll close with this one right here. Now, there's so much more that could be said, but there's. I'll, uh, maybe, maybe not. Let me just double check before we do close. From the people have rebelled with insolence, walking on the paths of the wicked ones on the path of the wicked ones, about whom God says in Deuteronomy 32, 33, their wine is serpent's venom and cruel poison asp. The serpents are the kings of the peoples and their wine is their paths and the asp poison is the head of the king, kings of Greece. So, you know, it's funny they say that because a lot of people say about... Uh, um, Queen Elizabeth, that she was a reptilian shapeshifter. And I thought that was kind of interesting to actually read that. At any rate, I want to thank you guys for being here with us today. Uh, lengthy, a little bit of a lengthy message here, but I really hope it's a blessing for you and that it'll be a benefit in some way uh, and that uh, take you a little bit deeper into the things that are anticipated to come. You know, one of the things that I've said before to you is that this, uh, I was told that this thing travels in the ether and even the aspect of CERN being used to tap into the ether because of the power that is there, I believe is what opens that portal. It opens that gateway. Uh, believe it or not, there's actually the verbiage that is used like that in the Dead Sea Scrolls, that it is a portal that is used uh, that allows the chariots of God to be able to travel back and forth. In other words, an opening in that dimension. So if, for example, uh, Satan returns and let's say he's the one coming on here, uh, or, or however this battle is supposed to transpire, clearly something's going to open up and let this this thing in. And it's going to bring about chaos and mayhem. People, as we read earlier, they're going to go crazy. They're already starting to go crazy. I mean, you got people, I see videos being posted on Twitter, you know, just going up and punching people right broad daylight, right in the middle of a mall and in a convenience store, just anywhere. People are losing their minds already. 
And I think that has a lot to do with more entities being able to put thoughts in people's minds. As you know, many of the thoughts that come to your head are not your own. And this may be affected because of what man is doing that's allowing all this to happen. And, uh, and even though it is a cycle of, say, 3,600 years, there's still those that know when it's coming. And, it, and even if it is on another side of another dimension, when you open that dimension up, then it's here. So let's pray for one another. Let's keep those things in mind. Pray for those that you love. Don't let every thought that comes to your head control you and rule you. Take control of your thoughts. And because we're in a very serious hour, friends. Uh, again, thank you for your support of the ministry that we do here. And also, I want to thank you. Uh, um, you know, besides earlier, I shared with our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. It's right above my head there. But uh, also, don't forget about an EMP shield. Um, I'm going to be putting together some very interesting information about that this coming week. And, uh, but if you do decide that you want to get one uh, for whatever needs that you have there, and they have them for everything you could possibly imagine. I did learn one thing about the solar applications, though. Uh, well, there's a good there's a good example. You can see it right there, the, the solar panels on the wall and behind there. And when I was uh, there at one of the guys' place there, in between each one of those, he had, had an EMP shield in between. He had to have two... He was able to run three boxes for him. Uh, but when you do get whatever you have need of, uh, and I don't know which one you would have need of, but when you click on it to save $50, you always want to take and include a coupon code. Um, when you go to the cart there, it's going to ask you if you have a coupon code and you want to do INL50 right there. You apply it. No matter how many you need to buy, they'll always give you an additional $50 off. Then that price removed off of there, drops you down. Now you're at $339 for that particular device. So, like I said, if you do five devices, that's going to be five or four. For example, easy to figure there, $200 you would save. So, and that just depends on what you have need of. I don't want you to just go out and buy four just to buy four. You buy what you have need of or what you feel that's most important to you. Anyway, Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a blessed evening.